Miles dancing to the song Jailer that was in, written by John Townsend, inspired by the Black Lives.
Thomas gave this speech at Threadbeam Hall in Rochester, New York on July 5th, 1852. Um, he was invited by the Ladies Anti-Slavery Society. Um, he was living in Rochester at the time and publishing his paper, The North Star. By the end of the 1850s, there are four million Africans enslaved in the United States. The, the, the value of those Africans were greater than all of, the, all of the railroads, all of manufacturing, all of business. It was the system of enslavement that built this nation. Um, the state capitol and the White House were built by enslaved people. New York as a financial center becomes a financial center because of the cotton industry. Um, all the mills in New England, as we connect this to the present, is that Douglas is clearly, in this speech, speaking to white people and the systems that white people control and the institutions that white people control. He's essentially saying Black Lives Matter. What we're seeing here is that we have a nation that's founded by people who believe they have the God-given right to take it. That foundation is built into the systems and the fabric of this nation today. And we see that um, in the, the sort of religious belief in neoliberal policies and, and multinational capitalism. But as a nation, yet we have failed to really deal with the whole history. Um, and I'll leave you with that. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you all for coming. We're dedicating today to the wonderful Paige Wadley Bailey, who is a longtime resident of Montpelier, who was crucial in getting the reading here in Montpelier. For those who don't know Paige, She's a social justice activist, an organizer, an advocate for LGBTQ rights, sister in the struggle for racial justice. And so to my mentor, to my colleague, to my friend and confidant, let's take a moment Paige is now resting in her bed. Got to see her the last couple of days. And her son Lance is now reading the Frederick Douglass speech. And he's with her now. So, Paige. We'll simply read the speech in order. Each person will take a paragraph, um, and uh, that's basically how it works. Pretty simple. Them with ovations, cheer them, toast 
you shed tears over fallen Hungary and make the sad story of her wrongs the themes of your poets, statesmen, and orators. Citizens, your fathers made good on that resolution. They succeeded, and today you reap the fruits of their success. This is the American slave is from 4th of July. I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days of the year, gross injustice and cruelty to which he has been denounced by this government as piracy, as an execrable traffic. To arrest it, this nation keeps a squadron and immense cost of parents. The time has come in the fervent aspiration of William Lloyd Garrison, I say, and let every part join in, say it with me, please. All God see the day when human blood shall cease to flow, in every crime be understood the claims of human brotherhood, and each return for evil good, not blow for blow. That day will come all cues to end and change to a faithful friend each foe. I'd now like to uh, introduce Carol Douglas to give us some final thoughts. Hi, my name is Carol Douglas, and I'm a cousin, a distant cousin of Frederick Douglas. And I can feel him in my system. All last night I was preparing for this, and I didn't even know I was going to speak. You know, I sound pretty good, you know, in the bathroom. <laughs> Today, I don't know what you're going to get. You know, uh, my father told me that Frederick Douglass fought for this. You know, and one thing I admire about him is several things. One of the main things was he didn't mince his words. He didn't care what you thought about what he said. He was more interested in the power of people. He was interested in his people who are blacks get freedom. And he also helped women. He was married twice. If you ever get a chance to go to D.C., his house is there, one of his houses. And it's very nice. And they also have a film of his wife. And in the end of the film, they ask him, Frederick, what would you tell the young people of today or the what would you tell them to do? Agitate. Agitate. What we need to do, what I need to do, is to put our names down on those ballots. Stop expecting people to do things what we can do for ourselves. You know, you don't have to be well educated to be uh, a representative or a senator. You know what I mean? And we will stand together to fight for the rights of people so that we are not discriminated against. It's not only the blacks, it's everyone in this country. Why are only a few rich people in control of this country? It's disgusting. And it's got to stop. So thank you. She's told me I gotta kill She don't know my mouth. Thank you.
Let your light shine. <laughs> All over the world. All right, bro. <laughs>